Welcome to the ABA Journal Legal Rebels podcast, where we talk to men and women who are remaking the legal profession, changing the way the law is practiced, and setting standards that will guide us into the future. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest installment of the ABA Journal's Legal Trailblazer series. My name is Victor Lee, and I'm an assistant managing editor with the ABA Journal. Today, I'll be chatting with Lisa Solomon. Lisa was one of the first lawyers to recognize and take advantage of the technological advances that make outsourcing legal research and writing services practical and profitable for law firms of all sizes. Through Lisa Solomon Esquire Legal Research and Writing, She assists attorneys nationwide with all of their legal research and writing needs, including preparing and arguing appeals and drafting substantive motions and trial memoranda. It's great to have you on the show, Lisa. Thanks for having me, Victor. Now, obviously, I just went through your bio, but could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, what made you decide to become a lawyer? I always wanted to be a lawyer. I think it was clinched when... Uh, in high school, I was taking a class on the Nazi period in Germany, and we did a reenactment of the Nuremberg trials as our final exam, and I found that fascinating. What role did you play? Um, I actually kind of went off book, so to speak. I was uh, defense counsel for Himmler, who was being tried in absentia, um, which uh, didn't actually happen. <laughs> Right, yeah, I think he killed himself before the trial started. But that must have been interesting. Uh, this was in, I'm sorry, you said this was in high school? Yes. Okay. As far as, after going through your bio and talking a little bit about what you've done, what made you specifically decide that you wanted to do legal research for a living? I mean, it's not really something that a lot of lawyers like to do. So what drew you to legal research? Well, I've always enjoyed any kind of research, you know, throughout college, researching and, and writing the papers that I wrote throughout college, um, and, and, of course, law school. I was very comfortable with doing the research and writing, and I, I was pretty good at it, so I decided why not go with my strengths. I also, uh, you know, thought that uh, having a career as a freelance lawyer doing legal research and writing would be flexible, would allow me to have things that I wanted to have in my personal life. My husband uh, was a practicing lawyer at the time, and, you know, we wanted to help a family. So we knew there had to be some flexibility there. Uh, and um, working as a, for myself as a freelance lawyer, um, doing legal research and writing, not making court appearances, you know, was something that was able to give me that, that flexibility, which is not to say that, you know, I, I didn't have um, help with the children when they were younger. You know, I've always worked full-time um, and had, you know, full-time child care. But still, you know, as parents, you know, I think everybody can relate. You know, as parents, sometimes your child care falls through for one reason or another. And so it's good to have, you know, one member of a couple, you know, one spouse being able to um, have a, a, a greater degree of flexibility when emergencies come up. Gotcha. So walk me through your business model then. If I owned a law firm or if I was a solo practitioner and I decide, okay, I have this important trial or this important appeal coming up and I want to hire you to do the research. So is it just as simple as just, you know, going to your website or picking up the phone and calling you and just say, okay, I want you to do this and this and this, or is there more to it than that? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you contact me, uh, like, as you said, through my website or, you know, by phone, and we talk about the parameters of the project, what kind of work you need done, the practice area, of course. I work in, in a wide range of practice areas, you know, civil and um, have done some criminal as well, uh, but mainly civil because there's just more, you know, pre-tri- especially pre-trial motion practice and appeals um, on the civil side. So, um, you know, we talk about the subject matter. We talk about the particular type of project. Is it a motion to dismiss? Is it opposition to a motion for summary judgment? We talk about deadlines, uh, talk about fees, of course. Uh, And then we get, you know, if if everything uh, is agreeable, to the uh, hiring lawyer. You know, I have a services agreement, of course, and we take care of the administrative stuff and get started. It's pretty straightforward. Well, let me ask you, because, I mean, obviously you've dealt with a lot of lawyers and a lot of firms and whatnot. Why do you suppose it is that lawyers 
necessarily don't like to do legal research or they're willing to at least hand it off to somebody? Like, what is it about legal research and writing that maybe isn't something that they're chomping at the bit to perform on their own? Right. Well, um, you know, as you said, some people didn't get into law for the the behind-the-desk kind of stuff. They thrive on the the courtroom skills, the courtroom tasks, or or they prefer client counseling or, you know, even enjoy depositions. You know, I've had plenty of clients, though, who do enjoy legal research and writing but just don't have the time to do a particular project um, at a particular time. So it's not necessarily, not at all limited to lawyers who don't like to do legal research and writing or who aren't good at legal research and writing. Plenty, plenty of lawyers who are very good at it and, and love to do it um, you know, also use my services. So let me ask you then. Obviously, we also like to take a look at what's coming down the pipes or what the state of the legal industry is these days. A lot of the latest legal research tools aim to make it easier for lawyers to do research. There are um, several services out there that, that aim to do this in a variety of ways. Some of them even have predictive capabilities or they have analytical capabilities and whatnot. So how do you compete with those type of tools? Or is it more of a case where you use those tools to help make your services more attractive and more powerful for your clients? Yeah, um, I don't see myself as competing with the legal research tools such as, and I assume here you're referring to things like FastCase and Ravel Law and those types of legal research tools. I see those, and then you could broaden that to include you know, Westlaw and Lexus. They're all just different types of cars, but you still need a driver. And so I'm the one that's, that's driving the car, so to speak. You know, each tool can get you to your destination. They may, you know, take you along different roads, but you're still going to get to the destination, but you still need the driver. So I don't see myself competing with the legal research tools at all. They're tools, you know, that I use as well where appropriate. On a related note, when talking about predictive analytics and tools that allow legal researchers to look at prior histories of judicial decisions in certain circuits and certain courts and jurisdictions. Are you using those tools to guide your own research, or has that not really been an issue for you? That, that hasn't really been an issue for me at this point. Um, you know, mainly my clients are looking more toward, you know, what is the law versus what has this particular judge uh, done before. Okay, great. Thanks for joining us today, Lisa. If our listeners would like to get in touch with you for whatever reason, what's the best way to do it? Sure. Anybody can reach me through my website, which is questionoflaw.net, not .com, it's .net. My phone number, 914-595-6575. Email lisa at questionoflaw.net. Thank you again, Lisa. And thanks to our audience for tuning in to the latest edition of the ABA Journal's Legal Trailblazers podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. This is Victor Lee signing off. If you'd like more information about today's show, please visit LegalRebels.com, LegalTalkNetwork.com, subscribe via iTunes and RSS, Find both the ABA Journal and Legal Talk Network on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, or download the free apps from ABA Journal and Legal Talk Network in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.